This next video lecture introduces the naming system that we apply for organic compounds. You'll notice that it's substantially different from the naming systems we have used so far, primarily for inorganic and ionic compounds. So we're going to use a system of rules uh, that we call the IUPAC rules, uh, devised by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists. And the goal of these rules is to be able to give every compound a totally unique name. So the first thing that we need to do in order to use the system is to memorize the names associated with the first eight straight chain alkanes. And those are shown on page 333 of your textbook in uh, table 10.6. Here I have an alternative textbooks uh, version of that. So you'll notice that when we have one carbon, that the name of that compound is methane, CH4, that alkane. If we have two carbons, C2H6, its name is ethane. And you'll see here that we're using these prefixes. Those will come up uh, as we go through here. But you'll also notice all of these end in ane and that is always going to be the case for alkanes. Alkanes will always end in A-N-E. So these have to be put to memory. As I said, only the first eight uh, for my class. Uh, other instructors might want you to do the first nine, the first ten, and this goes on and on and on uh, to you know 11 all the way up to 100 and well beyond that. But if we have the first eight carbons, then I'll be pretty happy. Now, five through eight should make a lot of sense. Pentane, like a pentagon, has five sides. So pentane for five carbons. Hexane, like a hexagon. Heptane, you probably have never heard of a heptagon, but that's what a seven-sided uh, figure would be. And octane, just like octagon. Uh, these other ones take a little bit more practice. So methane, ethane, propane, and butane. So we can't do anything at all with naming until you know these first eight. So be sure to make flashcards to learn them if necessary. I'm going to assume at this point that you do know them and go on to the rules for how to name the alkanes. So we're going to go through a series of about six rules here. So rule one, the first thing you need to do when you see an, a compound to name is find the longest chain of carbon atoms and we're going to call that the parent chain or the parent hydrocarbon for the particular compound and then we name that chain uh, according to the number of carbon atoms it contains going back these compounds are already named if they have no branches off of them so this is just butane that's its name this is pentane once we found the longest chain you're going to need to number the carbon atoms uh, from one end to the other. And you'll have two choices, of course, in terms of which side is the starting end. So the way that you're going to do that is you want to number so that you get to a substituent with the lowest number possible. You want it to be, if it can be two, you want it to be two. If it can be three, you want it to be three. So what is a substituent? Well, a substituent is any uh, group which is not part of the chain. For right now, we're going to start with substituents which only contain carbon, but later on you'll see that they could contain chlorine or other oxygen groups, as the case may be. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So here I have three different molecules, and I would like to go through the first two steps for each of these molecules. So first I want to identify the longest chain, and then I want to decide how I'm going to number this. So let's start off with this compound up here on the left. So I want to, as I said, go about finding the longest chain. So that's not too hard here. Um, if we look, I can go one, two, three, four, five. Incidentally, I could also go one, two, three, four, five. The only other possible chain here would be one, two, three. And that's, of course, uh, not going to be the longest possible chain. So I'm going to go ahead and 
draw a circle. Well, not exactly a circle. But I'm going to go ahead and mark off the longest chain. Incidentally, as I said, you could have actually started from here and drawn it down and you would have been fine as well. Now let's look at this compound right here. Uh, the longest chain would be one, two, three, four. I don't want to go up because that would stop. Five. I don't want to go up because that would be too short. That would be six. Uh, so six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let me go ahead and circle that. Or at least mark it off here. And then over here, the longest chain uh, just happens to be drawn uh, right there from left to right. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let me mark that off. So you'll notice sometimes they're easy. They're just drawn sideways. And other times they're uh, curved like they are here, which can make it a little bit more tricky. Now we need to number the chain so that we know which side is number one uh, and then which atom is number two, etc. as we go through. So if I were to go about this, I can number, if I number this number one, then the first substituent I get to is right here. And the substituent is just an atom which is branching off of it that's not part of the chain. So in other words, it's something that was not circled here. So if I go from this side, one, two, the substituents on carbon number two. If I go from this side, one, two, three, four, the substituents is on number four. So it would be better, again, we want to keep the numbers as low as possible. So I'm going to want this to be number one, two, three, four, five. So let's see if I can number those. So this will be one, two, three, four, and five. And let me move those out of the way. Okay, and those numbers correspond, again, to the carbons. Over on this side, uh, if I start numbering here, this is number one, number two, number three, number four. So this first substituent would be on number four four that I get to. On the other hand, if I number from here, one, two, three, I run into a substituent on three. So three is lower than four, so it's best to pick three. So let's go ahead and number these. So we decided this one was number one. So the way I'm going to have to do this, of course, is put a two there. And that's number one. Okay, and then I'm going to have to do this backwards. So this was three, four, five, six, seven. So this will be seven, six, five, four, and three. Of course, that's a little bit easier to do by hand. And then for this molecule right here, uh, if I start on this side, one, two, three, four is where I run into the first substituent. And if I number the other way, one, two, three, I run into a substituent on number three. So I'm going to want to number uh, with this side being number one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, again, I'm going to just type these in. So that would be eight, seven, six, five. And of course, you normally wouldn't be numbering backwards here. Three, 
to uh, one. That's just a consequence of how I have to type. So there we go. So carbon one. So again, step one, uh, it said to identify the longest hydrocarbon chain and name that. That's our parent. So the parent here with one, two, three, four, five is pentane. The parent name is pentane. So um, I'm not done with the name, but pentane is, is going to be part of it. So I'll just put that right there for the time being. Um, and you don't need to write that down yet. Uh, seven carbons here. So this is something something heptane. And this has eight carbons, so it's going to be something octane. That's not the full name. That is, again, just the name of the parent. And we'll come back to this in a moment. All right, let's move on to the next rule. Rule three tells us that there, if there is only one, uh, I say alkyl group, but the better word here would be substituent. So if there's only one substituent uh, present, uh, we're going to name it and locate it by number. And then we will attach the number and the name to the parent carbon chain. And we will attach that name to the front. Now, you need to know these four very common substituents by sight. So these first four are what we're going to call alkyl groups, meaning they're derived from alkanes. So this group right here, it looks a lot like methane, right? Methane was CH4. It's just one hydrogen short. And so the way we name this is uh, you take methane, take away the A-N-E, and add um, Y-L in its place. So this is called a methyl group, methyl. How about this? Two carbons long missing that one hydrogen there. And in place, we have another group. So this would be called, instead of ethane, this is an ethyl group. Recall that three carbon chain is called a propane molecule. Well, this would be a propyl group. And now this is also a propyl group, except it's attached at the carbon in the middle instead of at the end carbon. So instead of being attached to carbon number one, it's attached to carbon number two. And so the name we give to that is isopropyl. Rule four tells us that if there are two or more of the same kind of group present, you're going to indicate that there's two of them by saying uh, you're going to use a Greek pre prefix here, di. So if there's two methyls, you would say dimethyl. If there's three methyls, trimethyl. If there's four propyls, you'd say tetrapropyl. And you also need to indicate the number of the carbon atom to which each substituent is attached and separate those with commas. Now, I know this seems very difficult the first time you deal with it, but if you practice it, it won't be that bad. Rule five, if there is more than one different type of substituent, then you're going to list the groups in order alphabetically. So for example, alphabetically, ethyl comes before methyl. So any name that uh, begins with ethyl and methyl, the ethyl would always go first. How about if there was uh, propyl and methyl? Well, between propyl and methyl, methyl comes first alphabetically. So the substituents are always listed in the name, not by their number, but alphabetically. Also, we should note that if something is dimethyl, it still counts as be being uh, beginning with M. So we don't count di as uh, beginning with D. Dimethyl is M. Dipropyl counts as beginning with P. So we ignore those prefixes. Iso is always uh, going to begin with I, regardless of whether it's iso or diiso or, or what, ha what have you. 
And then the final rule here is we have uh, some punctuation rules for the names. So uh, whenever there's numbers in a name, two numbers next to each other, you're always going to separate the numbers with commas. Numbers get, get separated from words with hyphens. And then we do not want to put a comma or a hyphen right in front of the name of the parent hydrocarbon. Uh, and that's only going to apply for alkanes and uh, cycloalkanes, which we'll deal with in a moment. So let's go back to the three compounds we were just practicing with. Okay, so we're going to finish our look at naming these compounds here. So we said that the parent hydrocarbon is pentane for this molecule. There is one substituent. It is on carbon number two. It is a CH3. So one carbon, remember, is methane. So if it's a substituent, we call it methyl. So its name is going to be, let's see here from the beginning. So we have to say, first of all, it's going to be methylpentane. But we have to say specifically what kind of a methylpentane. Is it on carbon number two or is it on carbon number three? It's on carbon number two, so we write two dash. And that's how the name goes. 2-methylpentane is how we read that. Notice that there is no space or dash between methyl and pentane. The words just run into each other. Incidentally, why can't you have 1-methylpentane? Think about this for a second. If that CH3 was over here, well then that would make the chain longer. That would just be hexane. So there's no such thing as 1-methylpentane. Could it be on carbon number four? No, because if CH3 was on carbon number four, then that means we would have numbered it correctly, incorrectly. This would have been carbon number one. This would have been carbon number two. It would have been 2-methylpentane. Okay. Let's look at the next uh, compound that I have here. So we've decided already that this is some uh, something with heptane in the name. And we've decided that our substituents are on carbon number three and carbon number four. They are both methyl groups. So it's going to be something something dimethylheptane. So let me put that in the front. Dimethylheptane. And now there's any number of ways that we could have had dimethylheptane. So we have to say where the substituents are. They are on carbon 3 and on carbon 4 in the parent. So we write 3, 4 dash dimethylheptane. Again, remember the grammar. It says that there are always dashes in between numbers and words or letters. And between numbers, we always put commas. And let's take a look at our last compound here. And this is going to make use of rule five. We have two different substituents, a methyl group and an ethyl group, because it's got two carbons here. And so how do we list those in the name? We list them in alphabetical order. So we list the ethyl group first and the methyl group second. So the ethyl group is on carbon number five. So the name of this is going to be 5-ethyl. And then the methyl group is on carbon 3. Now we need to put in a number. So remember to separate letters and numbers, we always put in dashes. So dash 3. And now I'm going back to writing letters again. So another dash. 3-methyl octane. Okay, so this compound is 5-ethyl-3-methyl-octane. Don't be intimidated by this. I can guarantee you if you spend enough time practicing it and you keep the rules in front of you as you're learning it, you will figure out how to do this. 
but the key is always follow the rules in the step they are given. Don't try to find shortcuts because you're almost guaranteed to fail if you try to use a shortcut. Just do it the way that you've been taught and you will ultimately succeed. Other substituents do come up and let me just mention them right now because you might see them in the lab uh, before we get to the point of covering it. So the halogens are other very important and common substituents. So let me just for a moment uh, change this molecule down here. So we've already got the name written. Let's say that instead of that being a CH3 down there, let's say this was a chlorine. Well, the rules still pretty much are going to apply. Uh, the numbering is still right. The longest carbon chain is still right. But this chlorine is always considered a substituent. And when we have halogens there, they are named uh, as the name of the halogen, but with an O in instead of the ene ending. So this would be a chloro group. Let me put a bromine right here. Oops, let's just delete all that. So if this is a bromine, that would be considered a bromo group. Okay, so let's name this. So the parent is octane. We've already decided that. Uh, alphabetically, bromo comes before chloro. So let me name this here. This would be 5-bromo-3 three dash chloro octane. Okay. So halogen atoms are always treated as substituents and not actually as functional groups for when we are naming compounds. Let's go ahead and return to the final part of the lecture here. Let's do some more practice. Here are three additional compounds. I would like you to come up with the names of these compounds. Remember, be sure to go in order. So first find the longest chain of carbon atoms. Circle it. Number it so that you get to the first substituent with as low a number as you can, identify the substituents, and then place them in order alphabetically in the beginning of the name, put di in front of the substituent if there's two of the same kind, or tri if there's three, and be sure to put the numbers in front of the substituents and follow the grammar rules specified in rule number six. So please pause the video uh, and take the time necessary. And then when you're done, come back to check your work. Okay, let's go ahead and identify the longest chain in this compound. If I'm going from the left, it looks like it's going to be, uh, I don't want to use this carbon to start, because that'll be 1, 2. If I go this way, it'd be 1, 2, 3. That's more carbons, so we want more carbons. And then it doesn't matter if I go up or down. So we're going to want to go around here. So that is the longest chain. I notice there are two, so the longest chain is one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So the parent is hexane. If I number from the left, one, two, three, then the first substituent will be on 3. If I number this way, 1, 2, the first substituent is on 2. So I'm going to want this one to be carbon number 1. So there is a methyl group on carbon number 2, 3, 4. There is a methyl group on carbon number 4. So on 2 and 4, there's two methyl groups. So normally I would number this, uh, but right now in this software it's a little bit difficult to do it. So I'm just going to type out the answer right here. It is 2, 4, 
dimethyl for the two methyl groups, hexane. 2,4 dimethyl hexane. How about this compound over here? Well, longest chain would be going either down from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, or going the other way, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, no matter way, which way I choose to number, one, two, three, you'll notice I get a methyl on carbon three. If I number the other way, one, two, three, first methyl is on carbon number three, I have a tie. Uh, normally what I would do now is I would go to the next carbon. So one, two, three, four, the next substituents on four. And that would be a tiebreaker. One, two, three, four. Well, it's the same for that substituent. So there's really no tiebreaker at all for this particular compound. Uh, and it turns out the name is going to be the same either way since they're the same substituents. So the parent hydrocarbon here is going to be six carbons long. It is hexane. Well, that wasn't very pretty. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't really matter which one of these is number one. So I'm going to make this number one because you'll see if as you number through, it would be the same. I'll make this number two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So let me type the name here. So this would be three, four, dimethyl hexane. You'll notice that both of these compounds have a total of eight carbons, right? The longest chain is six carbons plus two substituents. Uh, and they have different connections of atoms. Uh, but same molecular formula, different names. That means that these two have to be isomers. They are isomers of one another. And then finally in this bottom compound, I think it's fairly easy to see that the longest chain runs uh, straight across from left to right or right to left, uh, as the case may be. And are we going to want a number from the left or the right? Well, if we start from the left, one, two is our first substituent. If we start from the right, one, let's try that again. If we start from the right, one, two, our first substituent is on number two. So it's the same thing, so we would need a tiebreaker. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Better to go to three than go to five. So we're going to number from left to right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the parent is heptane because it has seven carbons in it. There are three methyl groups here, and those methyl groups are on carbons number two, three, and six. Three methyl groups would mean trimethyl. And then seven carbons long would be heptane. All right. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. And then I'll add one more video which covers the naming of cycloalkanes as well as uh, some of the reactions of alkanes, of which there's really only one.